Hey guys, welcome back to the Loud Boy Experience. We have seven stories tonight, starting off with the first one, which is a friend of mine, Sean, at work, an update on my life and the people I work with. The second one is, I had an amazing conversation tonight, and it made me think, have kids lost the ability to truly play and use their imaginations? It's an interesting question. I got an amazing comment tonight, and that comment was about my last video, which is about why we miss Neil Peart. I'm going to read you the comment, respond, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Also, what I'm calling the Sons of Rush. This has been an idea that I've had for a while, and it's one that I want to talk about tonight, what I call the Sons of the Band Rush. 12 Monkeys, the TV show. A show that you may not know, and maybe you do. But if you don't, it's the best show you're not watching. I've made some cooking videos about Zelda, and I plan to make more. So I'd love your input, feedback, any recipes you want to talk about, and also Echoes of Wisdom. Yes, my next installment is coming. And guess what? I have an update on that as well. And finally, the last story, a couple that I met tonight, Maka and Jose, an amazing couple, one of us. She subscribed on the spot after I met her. Thank you for subscribing. And... If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's free. Hit the subscribe button. That way you can know when the next videos are coming out. This is the Loud Boy Experience. Let's go. I work at a steakhouse called Saltgrass, and I'm proud to work there. I work with some amazing people, one of which is a gentleman named Sean. He does a sometimes thankless job. He washes our dishes. Sean is an amazing guy. He supports me. He watches all my videos, and I thank you, man. I learned tonight he had to leave work early. One of his kids called, and my manager relayed this to me after I said, hey, where's Sean? Well, he got a phone call, and on that phone call, he's saying, what? Where are you? What's the point is, one of his kids was in trouble. Sean, my thoughts are with you, bro. And if you guys pray, please pray for Sean and his kids. I hope you're okay. And man, I just... You're such a good guy, and I really hope you're okay. I work with another Sean who also watches my videos and also a subscriber. Sean, thank you for subscribing. And then there's two other people at work that said came up to me and said, Hey, so your channel was down? You were canceled? I said, well, you watched? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. It means so much to all of you at work that work with me at Saltgrass that you watch my videos. It means the world to me. And it means the world to me that all of you guys have subscribed. And if you haven't yet, please do. But I have the most amazing team that I work with. These guys are amazing. These gentlemen and ladies. Every time I go to work, I'm blessed. Yeah, I'm going to work. I'm doing my job. I'm serving steaks and seafood and all the other cool stuff that we serve at a restaurant. But it's the interactions. It's the people. It's the people I work with. And finally, our seventh story is... It's the people that I meet. So, Sean, man, I hope your kid's okay. Your friendship means a lot to me. And the other night, I made some comment about, uh, man, I, I just said an off comment, I, as I normally do, a comment like, um, man, I hope they're not saying bad things about me. Sean immediately came back to me and said, man, if they are, I'm going to mess them up. That means a lot to me. It means a lot that I have a friend that would stand up for me in any given moment. That's a friend. And that means the world to me. So guys, let's think about Sean. Pray for Sean and his kid. So I hope you're okay, Sean. At work, there's another gentleman named Keith. Also a good friend. And it's been a pleasure getting to know him through the years. He's about my age. We both grew up in the 80s. And we started relaying, and all of a sudden he said, yeah, I used to play with my G.I. Joe figures all the time. I said, whoa, wait a second. He said, yeah, I get lost in the stories, or I'd be at school, or I'd watch a movie, and I'd think, I want to reenact that. I'm like, that's me. Except it was Star Wars figures. And I've mentioned before, I still have all of my Star Wars figures. Ironically, check this out, Keith. I keep them in a, in a metal case. That was loud. I keep them in a metal case. And on that case are G.I. Joe stickers. 
So, <laughs> how cool is that? But inside are my original upwards to 70. These are vintage, vintage Star Wars figures. And my and as we were talking, and we were both talking about how we get lost in our stories. And I and he wouldn't he'd make up his own stories. And I said, I do too. I never reenacted the Star Wars movies with my figures. I would make up my own stories. And I come home from school alone. And that's the reason why I still have my Star Wars figures, all in near mint condition with many of the weapons, because I did play alone. A couple of times when I actually played with other kids, I went over to his house, I brought my Star Wars figures, I lost two or three of them in a sandbox or wherever. I don't know if he stole them, but the point is I lost, I'm like, no, that's it. I'm never playing with another kid again. Yeah, I'm a loner. Check it out. These are vintage, obviously. The uh, Darth Vader and Obi Wan Kenobi. And I mean, my goodness, you could reenact that that one of that that close to final scene in Star Wars, right? The classic fight where he got cut down. But yes, these are from the first movie, so circa 1977. Darth Vader, Obi Wan Kenobi. Also, I have C three PO, R two D two. Another really cool one. I used to have more of these, but right now I only have one Jawa. This is Wicket, of course. Ewok, Return of the Jedi. One of my favorite figures, though, is the Biker Scout. I always just love the design of the Biker Scout. Because it took the classic Stormtrooper and it just made it that much cooler. And plus, they rode a floating motorcycle. Come on. So yeah, love my my Biker Scout. Speaking of Endor, Han and Leia in their Endor gear. Got those. But also, here's Leia and Lando. Both with her masks, okay, when they were in Jabba's palace, right? And, and she was pretending to be some kind of alien. And she had the thermal detonator. So these are... But also, check this out. I had to send away for this, the Emperor. You'd save these little coins, if you will, these little pieces of cardboard on the backs of your Star Wars figures. And I think it was like five. And I sent away. They didn't sell these in stores. Not, not at first. And so, yeah, this is the Emperor. And, of course, to go with it, yeah, Emperor's Royal Guard. One of the coolest figures they ever made. Man, Kenner made some amazing toys back then. True creation and true uh, inspiration from the movies made so well. That's just a sampling of my Star Wars figures. I also have a Jedi Luke. I have uh, three of these, Gamorrean Guards. I could go on and on. Of course, this guy, right? It's a trap! Yeah, that guy. All right, so those are my Star Wars figures, and I show these guys to you for a reason. Keith and I, we were talking, he put he with his G.I. Joes, me with my Star Wars figures. We play for hours and hours and hours, coming up with our own stories, using our imaginations. And then I said to Keith, man, what has been taken from our kids now? Now they're force-fed video games. They're force-fed anything online content. They're not using this as much. Not in this capacity. By the way, this guy, very valuable. The medic droid for Luke in, in Empire Strikes Back. Love this guy. They're not using their imaginations anymore, are they? Not to the same degree. That pure creation, that pure use of imagination that we use for our toys. And it could be any toy. I just happen to be a Star Wars figure guy. Keith with his G.I. Joe figures. But my sister had strawberry shortcake. And then a lot of young ladies had Barbie dolls. Whatever it might be, toys equal creation. Toys equal using your imagination. Which only helps this, our minds. And when you're force-fed content, video, and video games and stuff, and it makes me wonder, it's kind of a sad reality, isn't it? That kids seem to have lost what we used to have. When the Star Wars movies were re-released in the theaters, A, I was right after my neck surgeries. I wore one of those halo braces for, for months so that my bones would fuse in my neck. I actually went to the theater in my Halo brace. Look it up. 
if you don't know what a halo is, giant metal bars bolted to your head, so that way you can't move. I went to the theater in that to see what? These. The re-release of the original trilogy. I was there front and center. I wish kids would use their imaginations more. It's a joy when I see my son use his. His happens to be plushies. And he plays with his plushes. And he has his own YouTube channel where he creates videos. Amazing. It's a pleasure to watch him doing that now. Using his imagination and his toys to create his own worlds. If I had had that technology back then, I would have been making my own videos. You better believe it. Many of you may know that I have a new video out which is called Why We Miss Neil Peart. And I, I talk about how I miss him, what an inspiration he was to me. And it was a joy making that video. Well, I got a comment with someone who basically completely disagrees with me. And I'm thrilled that he wrote. And I'm glad that you wrote. And this is from, let me, let me read his name here. Stream of Consciousness. Okay? Uh, and Stream of Consciousness writes... I don't miss him, meaning Neil Peart. My video was, why do we miss Neil Peart? And he immediately writes, I don't miss him. But I do feel sad that he is missing out on Rush becoming a phenomena and seeing the influence he has on this latest generation. Counterparts is one of my least favorite albums. You might recall in my video, I call it one of my favorite. So it's one of his least is one of his least favorite albums from them, mostly because of that song. I talked about Devil Agent, which has kind of a spoken voice thing. And he said the spoken word indulgence was done much better on Caress of Steel. And then he writes, cheers. First of all, thank you for writing. Secondly, I'm glad you have a different take. I'm glad you disagree. That's cool. Imagine how boring the world would be if we all liked the same things, if we all were inspired by the same things and the same people. If we never disagreed, that would be insanely boring, wouldn't it? Therefore, I love your comments that you do disagree. That's fantastic. Like I said, I can't pick a favorite Rush album. I like Cressa Steels. You don't like counterparts. That's fine. Uh, you know, and it's our freedom, right? And I will choose free will. That defines us. It's one of our greatest gifts. Freedom. Free will. Freedom of thought. Freedom of, of expression. These are fundamental core principles of being a human being. Or at least they should be. There's a reason why... I miss Neil Peart. He's been a great inspiration for me. When I was a young drummer, I met an older drummer, one who could actually play most of Neil Peart's solo at the time. And this is circa show of hands. So if you know that solo, he could play that. It was when we were going back and forth to band practice. He had moved up from Texas, this friend of mine, the other drummer. In his truck, a white Nissan pickup truck. He had a row of Rush tapes. I'd never heard Rush before. And I'm like, what is this? I soon found out. And it changed everything. I used to listen to Top 40. I used to listen to that type of music, pop music. When I heard Rush for the first time, everything changed. Everything changed. So they inspired me to listen to better music right off the bat just by hearing them for the first time. So that inspired me to be a better drummer, a better musician, and also wanting a finer, better form of music. Fast forward, Neil was such a private guy. I think he may have been an introvert like I am. And yet he shared so much with us. He shared his books when he went through that devastating loss, when he lost his wife and, and daughter. He shared that with us in Ghost Rider, which is right back here. And I've read Ghost Rider a few times. 
And then his other books about touring and being on his motorcycle and his blog, he inspired me to write my novel. I want to be a writer. I love sci-fi and I love fantasy. And that's when I started writing Artera many years ago. Still need to finish it. So he inspired me to be a better writer, to be a better drummer. And then his lyrics. Neil Peart's lyrics, making complex things understandable. But also, he writes in like these proverbs. There are entire songs where he writes the, these little lines of wisdom and it's, they're just beautiful, right? These are the, the, the thoughts of an intelligent man. And, and I gravitate towards that. I want intelligence. I want someone to share their wisdom, their view of the world. And we, we fell in sync in so many things with how we viewed the world. It fit right in line with the things that I already believed in. And then he made me see other angles. To He inspired me across the board. And that's why I miss him. Because he was a mentor. Because of all these points in my life where I aspired to do things, I aspired to be better. And I was inspired to take risks that I had never done before. That's what Neil Peart did for me. And that's why I miss him. So it's cool that you don't miss him. And if, if anyone shares the sentiment, yeah. I, mean, I love the honesty. Neil would love the honesty. Again, how boring would the world be if we all agreed? If we couldn't have civil arguments or ways to express what we believe in, even though they might be completely different, that is... That is the, the fabric that holds us together. So thank you for writing that. Yeah, counterparts means a lot to me. Again, I was a freshman in college. And I remember laying in my bed. I had a copy, I think on cassette at the time. And I was, I was waiting for the local CD store to order me a copy of counterparts on CD. So for now, I had a cassette. And one of those old school Walkman. And I had my headphones on, and it was dark, and my roommate Joel was already asleep. But I would be listening to uh, Between Sun and Moon. And that chorus, that soaring chorus. Ah, uh, yes to yes to ah. Uh, wow. It just hit me. I needed that. I'm, I was so homesick at the time. And that was a comfort to me. Brand new Rush and all these beautiful new songs. So yeah, at that transformative point in my life, Rush was there with these amazing lyrics and this amazing music. And it just meant so much to me. That's what it mean, That's why Connor Parse is important to me. Because of that moment in my life, it meant something so deep and so important to me. That's why. So yeah, so I have a personal reason for that. That is music, though. That's why we love music. Because music should be personal. Music should move us on so many levels. It should move the deepest core of us. That is the power of music. And that's what good quality, beautifully made music should do. I've always liked a quote from Bob Dylan. The highest purpose of art is to inspire. What else can you do? What else can you do for anyone but inspire them? It is gratifying to think of us having inspired these youngsters to pick up a pair of drumsticks, a guitar, a rhyming dictionary, and torment their parents as we tormented ours. <laughs> Inspiration is a shared gift. Like love, like music, it's a little human magic. It's undeniable that Rush has been a huge influence on so many. And I've come to call these people the sons, the sons of Rush. Meaning, these are Rush's children, if you will. These are the people that they inspired. Dream Theater. Dream Theater played Rush songs when they first met each other at Berkeley School of Music. It was Rush that united them. That was the common language. And now fast forward, I'm going to the 40th anniversary tour of Dream Theater. So it's such an amazing thing that my favorite band, Rush, was such a heavy influence on my second favorite band, which is Dream Theater. Secondly, Stephen Wilson. 
I'm a huge fan of Stephen Wilson. And it's funny, I started off listening to Stephen Wilson in his music first, grew to love his music and his albums and all of his songs. And it's only recently, because of my friend Joel especially, I started listening to Porcupine Tree. And oh my, like, wow. Fear of a Blank Planet, what a song. And there's so many more. I'm learning. I'm I'm going through the catalog now. I'm learning more and more Porcupine Tree, but I'm such a huge fan of Stephen Wilson. He also another son of Rush, and on one of the Rush compilation albums or one of the I think anniversary versions, he did a cover of Twilight Zone. So you know, I know he was heavily influenced by Rush, and it's such a wonderful thing to know that he's so prolific now as a producer musician. And, oh, I love Stephen Wilson's work. There are many Sons of Rush, but I consider myself one of them. Again, I'm so heavily influenced by them. I've been listening to Rush for so long. That right back there is a custom painting my wife commissioned to have. And that's them from the 40th anniversary tour. That's Rush up there on my wall. I mean, it's undeniable how much I love Rush. You guys know that. But these Sons of Rush is like, you know you are if you are. Okay, if Rush has made such an impact in your life, whether it's Neil Peart's lyrics, Getty Lee, and oh, Getty is a maestro. Also, Alex. Alex Lifeson is one of the most underrated guitar players of all time, I think. But Alex is amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. The influence of Rush is undeniable. This also includes Foo Fighters, okay? That's undeniable. Foo Fighters gave them their Hall of Fame award. Rush, Fly By Night, Caress of Steel, 2112, A Farewell to Kings, Hemispheres, Permanent Waves, Moving Pictures, Signals, Grace Under Pressure, Power Windows, Hold Your Fire, Presto, Roll the Bones, Counterparts, Test for Echo, Vapor Trails, Feedback, Snakes and Arrows, Clockwork Angels, 45 years, over 40 million records, thousands of shows, selling out arenas all over the world. Billy Corgan in the documentaries talked about how he learned entire sides of Smashing Pumpkins, entire sides of Rush albums, or he brought his mom the lyrics to Entre New and wanted her to understand it. That's from their documentary. But also, Billy Corgan was there when they got their Hollywood Walk of Fame star. So yeah, I, two more influences right there. Foo Fighters, Smashing Pumpkins, Stephen Wilson, Dream Theater. I mean, it goes and keeps going and going and going. These are all Sons of Rush. Influenced by, they played their music early on, they learned it through and through, and then they started making their own amazing music. And I love that. I love that progression of being, quote, you know, children just listening to growing up and, and making your own. That's pure inspiration, and that's what I call the Sons of Rush. 12 Monkeys is the best show you're not watching. Maybe you are, and if you are, you already know. But 12 Monkeys is an amazing show. It's about time travel. The show started, I think, back in 2015-ish on the Sci-Fi Network, and they went on to have all these amazing seasons, but it is about time travel. It is based on the original French work, which then turned into the 12 Monkeys movie with Bruce Willis. And then from that, 12 Monkeys ties together so beautifully, one season, one episode to the next. And you don't know the brilliance until you watch it all. And that is the power of storytelling, but that's also the power of time travel. It's my favorite subject. Anything time travel, whether it be movies or TV shows, I'm there. I love time travel. And because of that, I mean, and 12 Monkeys is my favorite. So yeah, guys, if you haven't checked it out, watch 12 Monkeys. I'd love to hear about you. If you guys have watched 12 Monkeys, please let me know. Many of you may know I've made a cooking video wherein I created a Zelda recipe, a kind of a hybrid of two of their recipes. And I want to continue doing this. So I want you to let you know that I've not forgotten about the cooking videos. I really hope more are coming. And I want to actually create some of the actual recipes 
almost to the ingredient level uh, that we see in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. So more Cooking Zelda is coming up. But beyond that, Echoes of Wisdom. Yes, Episode 2 is coming. And there's going to be a few changes. Yes, I'm going through this for the first time. On the spot, real-time discovery. And guess what? I think I missed a couple things. So Episode 2, we're going to backtrack a little bit. And I'm going to grab those items that I didn't get before. Whoops. Let's just say I discovered that I was wrong. So yeah, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Episode 2 should be coming soon. Echoes of Wisdom. I hope you guys stay tuned for that. If you haven't watched it yet, check out my first Echoes of Wisdom. And our final story for the night. Are there truly accidents in the universe? Is the universe completely random? Or is some things just fate? You're meant to meet some people. Some people that weren't in your life before, but are in your lives now. And that is what I want to talk about. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? When you meet someone that you share so many things things about your life, the things that you love, the, th the events in your life, your, your family history, and all of a sudden, they're like, why haven't we met before? I'm not sure it's an accident. I think there's a design to things. I think we're meant to meet some people. Some people are meant to be our friends that we never considered, never thought of, never met before. But somehow, in the grand, complex web of infinite possibilities in the universe, we're connected at one point. And in that one point, we make a new friend. That is a marvelous thing. I was at work tonight, and I met an amazing couple, Maka and Jose. We hit it off right off the bat. She's such a sweetheart, kind and gracious. He was awesome, too. No offense, Jose, but Maka was just... Well, she was cool. And... It was an honor and pleasure meeting these two. And when our hostess brought them over, sat them, she came back and told me that I had another party, another couple at a table. So she's like, but these, these are a fun couple. The hostess said to me, these are a fun couple. These are our people. Well, she was right. We got to talking. And, you know, people talk about coincidence. I'm kind of a believer that there are no coincidences. And when there are, it's really just a more elaborate part of a plan that we can't even comprehend. Because sometimes people are put in our lives that we had no idea existed. We didn't know them before. But suddenly, we share so many things in common. And that is a great foundation for friendship. That is a great foundation for someone that should be in your life that were not in your life before. And that's kind of what I felt with Maka and Jose tonight. So right off the bat, I go over to the table and I was about to say, you know, I'm Eric and I'll be serving you tonight. But she greeted me with a British accent. And it was on the it was on the money. It was really good. And it made me it kind of took me aback. And I'm like, uh, you mind if I ask where you're from? And she just shook her head and smiled. She's, she's like, oh, I just watch too much British TV. <laughs> so that was a fake British accent, okay? And But it was really good. It was, you know, it was a good accent. And I told her, I said, the only time I can do an accent, like especially a British one, is when I'm just inundated and around that accent. I could be watching a show, and that's when I can do it. If I went to Britain or Australia or New Zealand, I, I would fit right in. I'd be able to do the accent. But the second you take me out of that and like just corner me one day and say, Hey, Eric, give me a Cockney or give me a British accent. No. Nah. No, nah, it comes off as some kind of southern gibberish version of who that who knows so yeah i can't do it but she did it on the money and it was really funny and here's why she watches way too much british tv she did the honor of writing down a li the only one i recognize here is faulty towers this is a list of british tv shows this is my homework assignment thank you maka uh that i i said you know because i love sherlock the remake, the modern version with Benedict Cumberbatch. I love that version. 
And I'm such a big fan of Sherlock, but also I've watched Downton Abbey and, and many other British TV shows. However, this list took me aback. And she kept writing. You know, I was trying to get their drink orders and, you know, start off getting whatever they wanted to order that night. And she just kept writing and writing and writing. Oh, my goodness. This would take me forever to watch. So I'll probably start with Faulty Towers. I'm not sure what I'll watch after that. I'll pick something else because I think the other one you mentioned first was... Eight out of ten cats does countdown. Uh, that sounds like a weird show, but you've piqued my interest. So, Maka, thank you for the list. Our conversations got so deep and so personal, and she was telling me about how a recent loss in her life and what the specifics of what happened, and I was like this, listening to her story. I said, that happened to me. I lost a family member that way. And it blew my mind. Sometimes people are thrown into your lives that you didn't expect, that change you, have the potential to change you, where you share so much from the common things you love to how old you are, how you grew up, the life experiences you've had. I've had this experience a couple times in my life, uh, one of which is a young lady that I met a couple years ago, and I haven't heard from her in a while. She lives in New Hampshire. I was born, and I used to live in New Hampshire myself. And I, I miss her. I haven't heard from her in a while. And again, we shared so much from our love of music, you know, like Rush and Dream Theater, to our love of sci-fi and fantasy. But it's this common language of, a, of what was a stranger that has then potential to be a friend. That is near miraculous, isn't it? I wonder if you guys have had that experience. If you have, drop me a comment. Share it with me. Because I, I know I can't be the only one to wear a chance meeting in the grand calculus of the universe... The fact that two souls could be united at one point. It, like, they could have had any table in that restaurant. They could have picked any restaurant. They could have gone to any town. And they could have gotten another server tonight. But no, they came to my town, my restaurant, sat at my table, right? The, the chances of coincidence get narrower and narrower and narrower. And then these, this couple is sitting in front of me, and it's like, whoa, how, why haven't we met before? I love that. And I've had that so much with all of you. If you've subscribed, thank you. Reach out more. Drop me a comment. I want to hear from you. One of the many things that you see on my channel that I love, most likely you love as well. And that means so much to me that you subscribed. That means that we have a potential connection there. So I thank all of you for subscribing. I thank you, Maka for subscribing. It's in a Hawaiian name, M-A-K-A, I believe. Um, and his name was Jose. And I, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to do it. He looks just like Jeff Bezos. Because I brought up The Expanse. I said, hey, if you haven't watched The Expanse yet, you need to watch The Expanse. It's hard sci-fi. It's a brilliant show. And I love The Expanse. And I told her that I started on the sci-fi channel just like 12 Monkeys. I missed the Sci-Fi Channel. And then when they were canceled by Sci-Fi, Jeff Bezos loved that show so much, he picked it up for Amazon Prime. And then they got a couple more seasons on Prime. That's where you can find it now. Another great homework assignment, 12 Monkeys, The Expanse. 12 Monkeys you can find, I believe, on Hulu. And then The Expanse you can find on Amazon Prime. So yeah, it was such a pleasure meeting you tonight. Thank you for subscribing. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do. This has been episode four of the Loud Boy Experience. And I hope you enjoy these seven stories. More stories are coming soon. I thank you for being here tonight. Please subscribe. Like it if you like it. Drop me a comment. You guys are awesome. I hope you have a good night.